Welcome back, you guys. We're having a passel of problems. Right, with technical. Um, but we, we made a determination better to come back with at least Alicia Like on audio um, because she's here and she's fabulous and we want you guys um, to, to get a chance to meet her. So Alicia, welcome to the show for the first time. Tell folks at home what your title is at the Center for Autism and Related Disorders. Well, thank you for having me. I am a regional manager designee up in the Portland metro area in Oregon. And uh, we're so thrilled that you're here with us. We do a segment regularly on our Thursday show where we uh, ask an autism expert questions. And, and you're a BCBA and you have your master's in education too, is that correct? Correct, yes, I was a special education teacher before I got into ABA. Okay, great. And, and so we wanted to um, have Alicia on the show and, and today fit better with her than for Thursday. So um, we're thrilled that she's here. Nancy's got the first question. I've got the first before. question. My child is seven and having a lot of problems at school. He doesn't have friends. He seems to always have a dark cloud over his head. He's very emotional, takes everything personal. When he was five, we got a diagnosis of high functioning autism. We didn't do ABA because our pediatrician felt he didn't need it. Would it help him now or is it too late? He's seven. Absolutely. I actually have a patient who sounds very very similar he was taking everything personally when his siblings would get in trouble for any reason he would start to cry and he would take it all in as though he had done something wrong so it sounds very similar he started with us when he was i believe eight or nine and he has just made tremendous progress we've taught him how to be assertive and we've taught him how to manage his emotions and the difference between something that he did wrong versus something someone else did wrong and helped him kind of learn the difference there. And, you know, mom might be mad at your brother and that's okay, but that doesn't mean you did anything wrong. And then we've also taught him to stand up for himself because he is a kid who um, other kids, like his cousins, would say like, hey, go clean up my toys. or And he would just say yes to everything. So we've worked with him on those skills. And I say it's never too late. Okay. It's going to look a little bit different. The program will look a little different, but that's okay. We can help at any level and at any age. All right, good to and know. And I just get so furious when people um, make comments about ABA with it that when they don't understand, well, they'll say, oh, well, this person is too high functioning to benefit from autism. It makes me want to light my hair on fire. Um, and then the flip side, when people say, oh, your child doesn't have enough skills to benefit from ABA, and that makes me nuts too. Um, because, you know, when you think about the wide spectrum of people on the planet that benefit from ABA, it's everything from very small children who don't have a skill level up through Olympic athletes right. who benefit from ABA. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, I, thank you for, for that um, answer, Alicia. Moving on to the next question, my teenage daughter is autistic. We are trying to teach her about hygiene and self-care. It's not going well. My husband is so fed up, he is suggesting that we just let her not take a bath until she's so uncomfortable she decides to do it for herself. I don't think that's a good idea. She goes to school, her teachers will think that we don't care. What do you suggest? First thing I would look at here would be what's going to motivate her. Because a lot of teenagers, I mean, some of us too, we don't... <laughs> We don't always like to do hygiene because, you know, it takes time and maybe we don't see the benefit in it. So first we would want to look at what's going to motivate her, if anything, to do it. Because if she doesn't see the reason for it, then she's you're, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle. We had a student that I worked with for a while who was 22 and same thing. She did not want to engage. She could do it. She just didn't want to. But she loved Starbucks and she loved playing dress up. And so what we would do is we would go to the gym and we would um, let her be kind of the aerobics instructor and tell us what to do. And, and we would do little things at the gym. And then we would say, you know, I really want to go get Starbucks, but man, we stink. We got to take a shower. And so we would, we would go in the little individual showers and we would shower next to her. And then we would go to Starbucks for a treat. And that was the way we could get her buy-in of like, Hey, we want to go to Starbucks, but people are going to look at us weird if we stink at Starbucks. So let's go to the gym. We'll do a little workout and then we'll shower so we don't stink at Starbucks. And um, I've taken another approach of like, if you know, if you want to date, I maybe we're too young for this. But 
But the idea here is that you want to look at what's going to motivate that individual. Because if she doesn't see a reason to shower, then she's not going to. And you're just going to, you know, battle it out. But you could also give her a lot of choices. Like maybe you could get her a really cool smelling, you know, take her to to a store that has um, a lot of different smelling gels or bath salts. Let her pick something that she really enjoys. Let her pick, um, you know, something special that she can do when she gets out of the shower and, and just go with what is gonna motivate that individual and how can we kind of get them on board? And even ask her, is there a certain part of it that you don't like? Some students will tell us, I don't like my eyes getting wet. Oh, we can, you know, maybe we can do something about that. Or I don't like the soap, so maybe we can use shower gel instead or things like that. So I, I would look at those options. I love that. Okay, very good. So find that motivation and that mm -hmm. reward, right? Um, the next question is, how do you teach prepositions to a five-year-old on the spectrum? I would do this through a game, through maybe like a Simon Says type of a game. Um, you know, put the ball on the, you're gonna wanna start with simple ones, on, under, in. And what I would do is I'd go back and forth. I would let the child be the teacher too. And so then they're practicing both the expressive of telling me, put it on the box, Alicia, put it in the box. And then if I'm telling them, then they're practicing the receptive skill of understanding when I say, put the ball under the, the table. And so I would make it a game of, we're gonna hide the toy. Oh, where are we gonna hide it? And then when you get to more complex ones, like left, right, center, a lot of times I will do those with a drawing activity where I'll say, you know, give the student a piece of paper and say, okay, draw a circle in the middle, draw a circle on the left, draw a circle in the corner, and then having the student get to play the teacher and have you do it, that also can help with motivation and make it more fun for them. I love that. You know, my favorite preposition thing in the world is the book Go Dog Go. That was my favorite book as yeah. a kid. Yeah. And I couldn't wait to get that for Jem. And and like I didn't realize it's all prepositions. Oh, okay. The the blue mm. dog is up and the green dog is down. Right. The right. you know, the, the the and then it's other things too, like the brown dog, so you're working on colors right. and what makes features that make the dogs distinct, but it's all prepositions. prepositions. It's there for you. So I super I super love that book. Right. And then at the end there's a dog party. And <laughs> does it get better than that? <laughs> I'm sorry. I absolutely, that's my, I, as an adult, I still love that page. When there's the dog party, <laughs> I still want to go to that dog party. Uh, what can I tell you? Uh, Alicia, thank you so much for coming and being our expert today and answering questions for folks. Uh, I know that they really appreciate it. And please give our love to everybody up there in Portland, okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.